Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Um, hopefully you can all see and hear me. Um, my name is Becky Kitchen and um, I'm just going to be leading you through this webinar which is all about the GA Professional Passport and Awards. And um, just a couple of things before we start. Um, first of all, uh, I'm hoping that you can hear me. Um, if you can't, then obviously um, do, do put any, any sort of comments in the chat box. And what I will do is I will um, leave time for sort of question and answer at the end of the session. Um, but if anybody does want to sort of type questions as we go, I'll try and uh, address them um, as, as I'm talking. Um, so, so that would be really helpful. Um, but as I said, there will be time at the end. Um, we're scheduled for an hour. Um, there are three of you on, the, the, uh, on the, the session at the moment. Hopefully we'll have a few more joining us, maybe. Um, it, it definitely won't last more than an hour, but uh, probably sort of, you know, between half an hour, 45 minutes is, is the likely sort of length, depending, of course, on your questions. Um, so, yes, what I'm intending to do today is to really just let you know and talk about what the professional passport and awards are, um, how they work, and then how you can get the most out of them, okay? So that's really what, what I want to be doing um, for the, the, next, uh, the next few uh, minutes. So the GA Professional Passport and Awards launched in September uh, 2019, so at the end of September 2019, so they've been going for sort of uh, nine months or so, and there are two ways of um, getting a passport, and I'm assuming that you are here today because you have a passport um, that you've either got because you've signed up on the website, or you've attended one of our CPD days, and for members, um, members of the GA, if they attend a GA for, um, CPD day, they do get access to the GA professional passport. So you will have that built in um, to your your course if you are um, if you if you've been on a GA course. So you should have access to everything I'm talking about today. Um, so yeah, if and I, I'll show you in a bit. So I'm going to share my screen um, and I'll show you how you can access the different bits of the professional passport. So as I said, we, we launched um, in September, at the end of September 2019, and uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the, the idea behind it, the idea behind the GA Professional Passport and Awards. So I, I really do like this quote from Dylan William at the top, that um, every teacher needs to improve, not because they're not good enough, but because they can be even better. And I think it's really, really important to focus and invest in yourself as a professional. Um, it's really important that you know we are engaging in professional development and subject-specific professional development at that, in order, in throughout our careers, in order to develop and become better at what we do. Um, so I've just put there on the screen just some, some reasons why I think it's really important to invest in subject-specific CPD, um, basically to invest in yourself as a professional. Geography is such a dynamic subject that actually it's vital that we keep our knowledge, our skills as geography teachers um, up to date, um, our subject knowledge, our, you know, our pedagogy. It gives us that opportunity as well to be self-critical and reflective. Um, and I know as, as a, you know, I, I was um, a geography teacher and head of department for 16 years, and I certainly found towards the sort of, you know, as I, I was getting sort of more and more experience, I didn't have the time and the space um, to be as self-critical and reflective as maybe I was at the beginning of my career. Um, so I think, you know, investing in, in that subject-specific CPD is really, really important because it does give you that um, ability and that, that time to be self-critical and reflective of your practice. Subject specific CPD also encourages that collaboration with colleagues in the wider geography community. I mean, hopefully today, um, you know, you'll have an opportunity to, to talk to me through the chat, um, to communicate and, and interact with uh, other um, geography teachers as well. Um, so, yeah, I think even, even something like this, gives that opportunity to have collaboration and to talk to other people who've got similar uh, needs and interests. And ultimately, what we're here for, uh, we're here to improve the teaching um, and the outcomes um, of our students in geography. And so that's another reason why CPD um, is really important. I'm just going to very quickly um, think a little bit about what we mean by CPD, because I sort of alluded to the fact that, you know, today's webinar um, I, I would class it as CPD, and in fact, there's a chapter in the Handbook of Secondary Geography, 
um, which which talks about what we mean by CPD. And you can actually access this chapter um, on the website uh, as a download, um, where the uh, professional passport um, section of the website, the GA website. And it says, what we mean by CPD is those formal and informal learning opportunities with which geography teachers engage over time, causing them to reflect critically upon and consequently enhance their practice, ultimately for the benefit of their students. And so I think one of the things for me when I was, I was sort of developing um, the professional passport as an idea is I was, I think sometimes we think of CPD as, as going on a course. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go off to a nice hotel, have a nice lunch, we're, we're out of school for the day, and very often that's, that's really what people think about when they think about CPD. But I th there's so many sources of CPD, um, incredibly rich, but also as well, I, th I, I felt this was really important as a time of declining CPD budgets, um, it was really important to flag up to people some free and low cost examples of CPD. So for example, um, you know, if, if, if you're a member of the GA, you will have access to a journal. Reading that journal, or reading articles from that journal, and then having a discussion with colleagues, maybe at a geography department meeting, or maybe taking some of those ideas and trying that with your own students, that's CPD. Um, having a look at the GA website, maybe having a look at some of the teaching resources, that's CPD. So it's not just the fact that it's going on a course. Um, it's the fact that we, there's a whole range of rich, um, accessible CPD out there. And I think it was really important for us to make, make us aware, um, make people aware that that, that that existed. And then the, the kind of third prong um, that sort of uh, came was the, was the standards, the CPD standards. Uh, which were uh, published by the Department for Education in 2016. And they basically said, actually, here is an, a standard for effective CPD. So there might be lots of CPD you know, out there on offer, but what's effective? Um, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that now. There's, there's a lot of research, um, and a lot of research that's come out recently as well, um, about what effective CPD looks like. Um, but I think th this from the Department of Education really sort of crystallised as well, you know, the fact that actually, you know, that professional development should have a focus on improving um, and evaluating pupil outcomes. It should be underpinned by robust evidence and expertise. It should include collaboration and challenge. It should be sustained over time. And it's, it must be prioritised, therefore, by school le leadership. And I think as I was sort of looking at the CPD that, that the GA offers, that, um, you know, that, that geography teachers can access, um, some of those things were, were really quite interesting to me. It's that, that bit about sustained over time. You know, if you're going on a course for a day, it's very, very easy, isn't it, to sort of go on the course um, and then not have time to, to implement those things. So how can you sustain that over a period of time? Um, so those kind of three things, um, the fact that, you know, I was very aware and the, the, the community was very aware that uh, it's really important to invest in subject specific CPD. The fact that there are loads of different sources of CPD out there and the fact that there's now a standard for effective CPD, those sort of three things came together um, in the professional passport. So what is it? Um, this diagram hopefully really explains what the GA professional passport is. And it's got two bits. Okay, so I'm going to talk first of all about the passport, and then I'm going to talk about the awards. Okay, and they are very distinct, but they work together. So you have access to the GA professional passport. Um, and what it is, is it's a, a, a package where it's a, to support your reflection of the CPD experiences that you've had. Okay, um, so you can see there on the diagram. You are the teacher of geography. You have engaged in some professional development opportunities or experiences that develop the teaching of geography. We've talked a little bit about those already. So attending events, reading journals, um, belonging to networks, maybe, you know, Twitter, that sort of thing, going online, having a look at websites and teaching lessons. That's in there, too. Um, and then the professional passport is it gives you that means to reflect on um, and identify the impact of those opportunities on your teaching 
of geography and also your professional learning as well. Um, as I said, I'm going to show you in, in a minute. So hopefully you've had the opportunity to sort of play around with it a bit, but I just want to kind of um, show you what it can do. Um, the idea was that it's personal and flexible. So you, it, you own it. Um, it doesn't matter what your context is. Uh, whether you are in a primary school, a secondary school, whether you're um, an initial teacher and um, education, or whether you've got 30 years experience, it doesn't matter. It's personal and flexible for your use. Okay? You retain control. We cannot see anything that you put in your passport. You can share it if you want, um, and one of the things that you can do is you can use it as a portfolio, and then you can just, you can share it with people who have a Pebble Pad account, and you can also share it with people who don't have a Pebble Pad account. So you might want to share bits, maybe for um, appraisals. You've got an appraisal, you've put bits and pieces that in your um, in your passport. You can then print off a PDF or share um, bits of your passport with your line manager if you want. There's a whole range of tools for reflection, and I'll talk about a little bit more about that in a second. And also, the support and guidance does flag up some of those low-cost and no-cost CPD that we've, we've been talking about. So, without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing, my, um, stop, stop sharing the PowerPoint, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So, this... This is the um, PebblePad homepage, okay? And you log in at the top here. Log in here because you're an organisation. Scroll down to find the Geographical Association. We are there. And then you get um, to your login page. Now, you will have hopefully been sent a login from Julie, Julie Beatty, my colleague. Um, the first time she's, you um, sign, uh, either attend a course um, or you sign up on the website, um, shortly after you do that, you will receive your login. Um, so you can put that uh, login. Sometimes it goes into the junk. So if you haven't received it, do have a look at your, your junk email. Um, and then you can see this is my this is my home page. This is my um, my, my pedal pad uh, portfolio that contains the GA um, professional passport. But you can do lots of other things with this as well. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. But if you go to this what they call the burger menu here, you can do a whole range of things. You can get creative, um, and you can create. A portfolio, you can create a page, a collection, you can create an activity log, a blog, um, lots and lots of different things that you can create and you can do your own things um, within that. So for example, if I create a portfolio, it's going to be quite slow, um, I, can, uh, I can do whatever I want with this. So for example, I might want to um, put in one place um, all of the uh, independent investigations that my A-level students are doing. I can change the title of each of these tabs. I can add content. I can add text. I can add image, video, audio, quotes, um, whatever you want to do. And then you, you save it uh, here. And it becomes part of um, your, your pedal pad. Um, so you can do whatever you like. So for example, um, one of the things that I do in my pedal pad is I collect papers and, and things for my appraisal. Um, I, I create work, the workbook for the secondary geography quality mark. Um, there's loads and loads of different things that you can do. But I'm going to come out of that. I'm going to go back to my home page. And I'm going to show you the GA professional passport. OK. So I'm going to go to uh, resources. And I'm going to go to, hopefully, GA Professional Passport. Here we go. And create a response. And this will be in your um, your your Pebble Pad. You will have access to this. Um, when you, when you sign up, we can put you in that Professional Passport workspace. So you will automatically get access to the GA Professional Passport. 
Um, before I go through the passport, you can see they're highlighted in yellow with a nice uh, visit here. Um, this is where we have all of the information about the GA professional passport. Um, for you to just have a look at, um, it talks about getting started with pedal pads. It's also worth saying that in the burger menu, if I just go back to that, there are lots of um, health and support videos um, and, and sort of PDF help sheets. That's for the getting started and help help with the pedal pad itself. Um, but this, oh, sorry. Um, this is your passport, and we've we've created up your the sort of own um, own support and guidance for the professional passport itself. Okay, so going back to that, um, so it talks through what the professional passport is. Getting started with pebble pad talks about how you might want to use the GA professional passport. Um, which I'm going to talk through in a second. There's also a tab for sources of GACPD. So it talks through places that you can find um, CPD, for example, the GA website, GA branch of the networks, journals and publications, quality mark, courses and webinars, a whole load of things there. And then there's also a tab for networking in Pedal Pad. It actually, one of, the, one of the benefits is that you can actually engage in networking with other teachers of geography if you want to. Um, and in the same way that you can decide on your level of engagement with the passport, you can also decide on your level of networking. So it talks you through there on how you just get started with that if you if you if that's something that you want to do. So going back to my professional passport, this was the support and guidance, but going back to professional passports, you can see that it's a series of um, support statements and boxes. So for example, here we've got professional development focus. You might want to put there, I don't know, something that um, you want to focus on in geography. It might be an area of subject knowledge that you want to develop. It might be that you've been to the GA conference um, and you weren't really sure what you wanted to get out of it, but, but this is an opportunity to reflect on it. You just type that um, in, the, in the text box. So this is a free text box, so you can type in whatever you like. And you can see there that my save um, has come up. So I can save as many passports as I like, um, as long as I save them under different names. Okay, so I put my professional development focus in there. Reflection. Um, this, again, is a free text box, and it allows you to think about, you know, what did you do? What did you learn? How did you learn it? Why does it matter to you as a geography teacher? Um, and then what was good or bad about the, the experience. So, for example, if you've, if you've read a journal article, you can reflect then on what you did and, and why you did it and what impact that it made on you. Why does, why does reading a journal article matter to you as a geography teacher? Now, of course, if you said your focus, I wanted to improve um, this aspect of my teaching or I wanted to improve this aspect of my subject knowledge, um, then that, that actually might become really quite clear. Uh, then there's a, a section where you can look at impact, so what you've achieved, the progress that you've made, what professional knowledge have you developed, what professional attributes you've acquired, have you put theory into practice, how can you embed what you've learned into your practice, what's been the impact on students, what's been the impact on colleagues. Again, a free text box where you can just type your thoughts. And then what next? Have you, you know, if, if you've managed to develop maybe that area of knowledge or practice that you wanted to focus on, what next? What advice would you give to somebody who actually did something similar or wanted to do something similar? How might you develop another aspect um, or develop this aspect of your professional practice further? And of course, you can add evidence. So, for example, if you want to add, they call them assets in Pebble Pad, if you want to add documents, images, um, you can do that. You just literally upload them by dragging and dropping them onto the Upload New and then clicking um, and selecting which asset you want to um, include. So you can create as many of these as you like. Um, you just save them under different names, and it's a, a space for you to reflect on the CPD that you engage with. Okay, so I'm just going to come back um, to the room. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm going to start 
to share the PowerPoint again. We will come back to uh, we will come back to um, that in a second. So you have access to that now, okay? And uh, I would say if you've got any issues with logging on or anything like that, then either contact Julie Beatty, my colleague Julie Beatty, in the first instance, um, because she's the one that will have set you up, up with an account. Um, but if you've got any questions about uh, sort of how it works or anything like that, then uh, do drop me me an email and I'll, I'll give you my contact details at the end. So you've got access to that passport and you can use it as much or as little as you like, but it gives you that space to, um, to have that reflection. And as I said, it's really useful for, for appraisal. It's really useful for just kind of taking stock about what you've done and, and the impact that it's had. Um, and also, of course, it's, it's useful for job interviews. If you've demonstrated, you can demonstrate that you've, you've collected those thoughts about the impact of what you're doing and why, um, you know, and, and maybe sort of, uh, so for example, I've, I've got a little note in my diary every other Tuesday to just revisit and just have a look at what I've put in my, in my passport. Um, and, you know, it might be that I, I don't update it. Um, I just, go back and have a look, but it might be that I've been working on something and I think, oh, actually, yeah, that links really nicely to what the CPD that I've been doing. I'm, I'm just going to have a, 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 a type, you know, for a couple of minutes on that. So it's quite a nice way to revisit over a longer period of time. It sustains that CPD rather than it just being sort of one-off, I went on a course event. If you want to, you can uh, leave it at that. Um, but... Uh, just sort of looking at the diagram again, you can see that there is an opportunity to then, um, if you want to, uh, submit for a professional award, um, either at uh, the professional award level or the enhanced professional award level. So there are two levels of award, and you can see the award criteria there. Um, there are three criteria for the professional award and four for the enhanced professional award. And the idea is that... Um, the, the criteria for the Geo Professional Awards are, are relatively straightforward to meet if you have engaged in some CPD and you've reflected on it um, and used the passport to do that. So you can see there, you know, you've got reflection on how CPD is developed for teaching in geography, evidence of development of your geographical knowledge or professional practice, and evidence of impact on the quality of teaching curriculum or outcomes for students. Okay. The Geo Enhanced Professional Award is more involved because it is at the enhanced level. Um, so, for example, instead of just reflection, it's deep and critical reflection. Um, it's the evidence of development on your geographical knowledge or professional practice. It's evidence of impact on your own and others. Um, and evidence of impact becomes evidence of sustained impact. Uh, and there's also that fourth criteria, which is engagement with a range of professional development activities. So with that, we would expect a little bit more in the way of um, a range of different things that you're engaging in to, um, you know, if, if you've said, for example, that your folks, you want to develop your, um, your subject knowledge in, uh, I don't know, atmospheric systems, for example, um, you might think, actually, right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do a course, I'll go, I'll, I'll go on a course, I'll read some journal articles, I'm then going to try some bits and pieces out in my teaching, um, I'm going to reflect on those. So you can see that you're starting to build up a, a range of, a suite of different professional development activities that are um, moving your professional development and practice forward, your geographical knowledge and skills. So these are separate. So you haven't automatically got access to the GA Professional Awards, um, but you can sign up uh, for these on the website. And again, I'm just going to um, stop sharing this and share my screen again, because if you do sign up for the awards, then you can get access to the award workbook. So I'm just going to save and exit without saving. Um, and I'm going to go to my resources again. And I'll show you the GA Professional Award. The Enhanced Professional Award is very, very similar. So if you sign up for this, you'll get access to this workbook, okay? And in the same way, there's a bit of support and guidance at the beginning. There's some further support and guidance here. So it talks about completing the GA Professional Passport. It talks about um, what 
we mean by each of the criteria. It's also got a couple of examples. Now, because this is so new, um, we haven't got loads at the moment, but one of the things that I am working on, um, because we have had seven people go through the award process, we've currently got two people who've um, been awarded the GA Professional Award and five who've been there awarded the GA Enhanced Professional Award. Um, so one of my, my jobs for the next uh, sort of month or so is to, to put some more examples um, of submissions there. So um, I'm just going to click on that. You can open um, the PDF, and you can see there we've got each of the criteria, the reflection there. We've got second criteria there, and the third criteria there. And uh, on each of the call-outs, we've got the, the sort of moderator's comments. Um, and you can also see there the sorts of attachments that they, they gave as evidence for um, each of the criteria. So it's probably, you know, we're looking at um, a few paragraphs for each criteria to reflect on that. And you can just copy and paste from your passport. So one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that they are, they are separate, but they are joined up. So what we're not really asking you to do is to um, just to do them separately, but you can copy and paste and use the evidence and use your reflections from your passport and just put them, move them into the workbook um, to demonstrate that you've met those criteria, those three criteria. Okay. Um, so going back to the portfolio, and back to the workbook. It's a little bit different in that that gives you the um, information. You've then got the professional award with your criteria. So you put a brief, brief description of you and your context, for example, just you know a little bit um, about how you've been teaching, your role in school, type of school you're teaching, why you've decided to submit for the professional award, those sorts of things. Um, and then you've got your three criteria here. And then you can put uh, your evidence in, add, add any documents you like, um, and then you can free text here to demonstrate that you've met each of those uh, three criteria. Okay, and then there's a feedback and evaluation bit uh, where you just type a little bit about your context and how the professional awards have supported you. And just a little bit of feedback about PebblePad and the application process. So you can see there, there's a, it's it's because people basically what they they do is they they reflect um, with the with the passport and then they use those reflections. Um, actually, the amount of time it takes to 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 um, prepare your submission for the GA Professional Award um, is is not is not that great. And I'll, I'll um, sort of signpost that that a little bit um, in a minute. With the awards, um, you can. What we wanted to do was make them as as as, um, as sort of flexible as as possible, um, and we recognise that some people have different pinch points in terms of the amounts. You know, when when they're busy and when when difficult times of year are. Um, so essentially, you can submit at any point in the year that you like. Um, but we have three moderation windows, and the moderation windows are here um, for uh, this year. Um, and the, the new ones are on the website um, for next year. Essentially, it's the same same weeks, just obviously the dates are slightly different. Um, so we have one, one moderation window per term, and that is when each submission is moderated, um, and, and then uh, you, you get feedback. Just a couple of things about the moderation. Um, first of all, I said that uh, your passport is yours, and it's private. Um, Obviously, and the reason why we, we decided to do that was, was sometimes your reflections could be really quite personal, um, and you might really not want to share them with anybody, and, and that's absolutely fine, and that's why we felt it was really important that you had ownership, and you chose what you shared and what you didn't. But obviously, if you are submitting for an award, then you do need to share um, bits of your reflections, okay? So just to be aware that if you submit for an award, and you copy and paste into the award booklet, the moderators will see your award workbook. They won't see anything else, but they'll see what's in the workbook. Um, 
and then the second thing is um, the moderation. So what we've we've um, done is uh, the GA Professional Award is actually moderated um, by myself and my colleague John, but also by people who've uh, achieved the Enhanced Professional Award. So it's that peer review, um, which is really actually quite nice because they then they've got the enhanced award and then actually it allows them to sort of feed back into the process and to, to support other teachers going for, for the accredita accreditation. Um, we've also got a national moderation team for the enhanced award um, and that is uh, growing um, by the week. Um, so that and that includes uh, but again both myself and um, and my colleague John but uh, also one or two people who've got the enhanced award already and also other people who are involved in sort of ITE um, and CPD, they've got a range of experience um, in professional development across a range of uh, contexts. Okay, um, so that's the professional award. The Enhanced Professional Award is the same uh, in that you get access to a workbook. You just demonstrate that you've met those criteria. Again, you can copy and paste um, or you can put new things in if you want to. It's completely up to you. So let me come back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So, so far I've talked through the professional passport which you've got access to already. Um, I've also talked through the professional awards which again you don't have access to straight away but you can choose to opt into if you want to. Um, there is a fee attached to that, um, and that's detailed on the website. So I think off the top of my head, it's about £20 for the GA Professional Award, and it's £45 for the Enhanced Professional Award. Um, and again, it's, it's completely flexible. So you can submit for as many awards as you like. Um, you can choose to start at Professional Awards and then move to the Enhanced Professional Award, or you can go and straight in at the Enhanced Professional Award. It just depends on whether you feel that you can meet those criteria, looking obviously at the exemplification. Um, just a few bits and pieces um, in terms of uh, numbers. I've said that we've had seven people already go through the process of gaining an award. Uh, we've actually got 122 people who have got a GA Professional Passport. Um, so hopefully, uh, and one of, one of the things that hopefully today um, is going to give, uh, um, and, and you'll all get a recording, and also um, everybody who haven't been able to attend will get a recording as well. Um, but hopefully, that's it's it will give people who are are engaged in the passport, you know, just a bit more of an understanding of, of what it can do. Um, but also, it might prompt them into um, getting an award as well. Um, so. As I said, you've got access already. Here on this uh, slide here, I've just put some things um, from some of the people who got the awards, uh, just to give you a flavour of why they did it and why they felt it was useful. So, um, Faye Wilson Creasy, who was actually one of the first people to get the GA Professional Award, um, she she sort of put on Twitter, so pleased to have been awarded the GA Professional Award. Fully recommend the process to make you really reflect on what your impact has been in your school and for your students. And then I actually did a Twitter Q and A with um, Simran Jahal, who is uh, she was our, our second um, awardee for the Enhanced Professional Award. And one of the questions that she was asked is kind of why are you doing this? What what are the main benefits? And she actually identified four. Um, so I don't know if you can read it because the, the text is quite small. But first, she said, firstly, to reflect on my past CPD and geography teaching experiences. Um, the world of teaching can be incredibly fast paced. So to stop and reflect on my practice so critically has meant I've come out the other side even stronger with clearer goals. Um, secondly, I absolutely love having my portfolio stored on PebblePad. It's a great way to document and organise my experiences, knowledge and skills in an online format to keep throughout my teaching career. Um, thirdly, the entire experience reflects what CPD should really be, continuous. It removes CPD from being a one-off course attended and turns it into a vibrant, dynamic and deeply reflective experience of my past and present geography teaching. And then finally, she said, lastly, it helped me reflect on not just my own practice, but the impact that I have on others, because she's the head of department and she decided to go for the enhanced award, which had that criteria um, where she was asked to reflect on not only the impact that the CPD she'd engaged in on her, um, but also on, um, on her colleagues as well and other, on, on others. Um, so not just people working in her own school, um, but other people as well.
Okay, so um, that's all in the way of the slides. Uh, I will ask Julie to send through both the PowerPoint and the recording so that you, you can have a look at that um, at your leisure. On the PowerPoint, there is a link to the website and a link to the Professional Passport web pages and also the Professional Award web pages. Um, if you've got any questions after today, uh, then you can either contact me um, at uh, Becky Kitchen on Twitter, or you can send an email to info at geography.org.uk, and it will find its way to me. Um, but that's all for the minute, I think, in terms of all the information that I've, I've, I've got for you in terms of uh, on, on, on the slides. Um, but if you've got any questions at all, I'm going to obviously going to stay around um, for a little bit. If you want to put anything in the chat, um, and do feel free to type away. Okay, um, no, there isn't a time limit at all. Um, the only thing is, so access to the professional uh, passports, um, sorry, let me just check my volumes, right, yeah. So access to the professional passport you have for a year, okay? Um, so the cost of that, if you've done a CPD course, the cost of that is built into the CPD course. Um, if you've come to it through the website, you'll have paid for it um, on the website. So you get access to your professional passport for a year. And because um, that essentially covers the pebble pad license, um, that's you, you have to have a pebble pad account in order to be able to access both the passport and the awards. OK, so you have a year. Um, so there's not a limit because you can keep renewing your your pebble pad and you can keep renewing your passport um, but if you wanted to do it within the time that you've got access to it because it's you've, you've paid for it through your course then i would say yes you've, you've probably got a year to do it okay um and and that access will expire you get an email um reminding you that that you know it's been a year since you've been on that cpd course um, and, and would you like to renew? You'll get one of those um, um, sort of a few weeks before it's due to expire. Um, so no, but also yes, if you if you only want to sort of have have access for a year. Um, and with regards to the pebble pad, can you backlog your training? Yes, you definitely can. Um, we wanted this to be um, time. Essentially, things things lose currency over time, don't they? So, for example, if you've got a professional passport and you've got an award um, now, um, in in sort of a year's time, that's going to be quite current. But in sort of ten years' time, um, it's going to be less so. It's absolutely fine to refer back to things that you've done in the past. Um, but what I would say is, if if you're sort of um, it, it really depends on what your focus is and what, what criteria you're choosing to talk about. So, for example, if you're talking about only things that you've done 10 years ago or five years ago and aren't talking about what that and what you're doing now, um, then I think the, the moderators will sort of look at that and go, well, OK, that, that's great. It's shown that they're reflective in the past. But what about what about now? But um, it's absolutely fine to use prior experiences because it's, it's about building that journey and it's about showing sort of where you were and where where you're going to and where you come from um so yeah that's it is absolutely fine um, but just be aware that it is about being a reflective professional all the time um not just sort of five years ago okay oh and that's great i'm i'm i'm, I'm really pleased kirsty um so yeah and and what's really important is it's it's for anybody at any point in their practice. So NQT, yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, one of our, two of our professional, enhanced professional awards, um, awardees, they weren't NQTs, I think they were in their sort of second year of teaching, but 
it was really noticeable how reflective their their um, submissions were because I think they're quite used to doing that or it, it's it, because you do that quite a lot on your, on your training that that sort of reflective professional bit um, it was really nice to see how reflective uh, their submissions were um, so yeah fantastic I'm, I'm really glad that you can't wait to start